Aaron from Mayo, this guy has almost certainly kicked some ridiculous scores against your county over the years. One of the most gifted players ever to play Gaelic football and a favourite of ours on Second Captain's Live. Please give a massive welcome to Kieran McDonald! <laughs> Great to see you, first of all. Hope you're well. Fine, thanks, Owen. We showed your point against, showed a few of your good scores there, but the point against Dublin in 2006 earlier on in the show, is that one of your own personal favourites? Yeah, I suppose, uh, you have to say, this is probably the best one I scored, I suppose, because of the timing and what it nearly brought us to. But it's funny when you talk about football and you say, what's your 2006, what happened that day? I remember shortly after putting that ball over, maybe two phases of play after, I gave a stupid ball across the field and I said, here we go again, Mac. <laughs> you know, and that, that's what stuck in my mind going home, that evening, how, how thin the line is between success and failure. I you know? have heard sports people talking like that. You, you bring up something positive and then in, uh, a sports person might think of the negative. Is, is that... Is that almost a deliberate ploy? It's better to think of the things that went wrong because that'll drive you on to improve? <clears throat> no matter what was ever said in the media about me, I'm my own worst critic. That's <laughs> yeah. it. You know, after every game, club, county, I go home and you think about the three or four points that you missed or the bad pass you give. You never go home thinking I done A, B, C, D and E right. You always go the other way or else you'll never improve. That's what I do. What did you see as your job on the pitch for, for Mayo? My job on the pitch for Mayo was to try to supply balls to the boys inside, try to be, try to, to be their eyes in the field, trying to see a play or two ahead. I mean, is, do you think is there still a place in Gaelic football as it is now for a player like, like Kieran McDonald? It's, it's, it's probably a stupid question, but I mean, the way that... <laughs> the, well, you've asked it now, we yeah, might as well commit. Yeah, might as well commit now, yeah, but I mean, to, to that type of player. People say football's in a bad place. I think football's in a great place at the moment. I think the amount of training that's gone in, the amount of, the amount of media that's evolved in it, I think uh, football will just evolve. Now, now I think that even more so the long distance kicking, even more so the long thinking two or three steps ahead. I think football now has to go wide with from your corner forwards, keeping them wide. No matter how many people come back to keep as much distance from you and the extra man back, recycle and get your good kickers on the ball that can score from 40 or 50 yards out, that can think two or three steps ahead. I think it's a more thinking game now instead of just people on about mass defence and every manager has his own right to set up his team the way he wants. I just think if it's up to the player to see, like if a manager can have A, B, C and D of tactics, but when a player goes out in the field, he has to play what's in front of him. You can't be looking over to a sideline looking for inspiration every two seconds from a manager. He's done his job. The argument seems to be now that that is the case, though, that players are almost overly programmed by their managers and they're just robots and go out and carry out orders. Yeah, and that's where I think it has to change. And that's where I think that these blanket defence, when they are used, will make a change. That you're going, to have to, you're going to have to see two or three steps ahead. You're going, to have to see, you're going to have to force the man inside to make that run by giving them that ball. You have to be unselfish in regards to saying, well, I'm not as good at shooting from 45 yards out or 50 yards out, but I'll work laterally inside to recycle the ball, to let my good shooter on the ball. And that's the way football, I think, has to go. We're talking about you as a footballer in the past tense, but you're still, you're still <laughs> playing. You're playing for your club, uh, Cross Malina against Claire Morris this weekend in the league. Yeah, I've, uh, we're playing Saturday evening. Yeah, still enjoying it. Uh, training hard. Um, I love my club. I've always loved my club. There's a great bunch of fellas there now between, that weren't around when I first started playing football. My first championship game, the majority of the panel now weren't even born. But I'm there and I'm trying to, try, trying to hang in there and trying to give them a small bit of wisdom if they listen to it an odd time. And do, do they listen? Uh, times, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of your club, we actually saw this clip on uh, YouTube of you playing for cross line against Kiltane in the Mayo Senior Championship not so long ago. And uh, apart from the 11 points that you kicked in this game, uh, we couldn't help but notice that the commentator relied on one stock phrase to describe every score. I mean, I suppose from his point of view, if it ain't broke, you know, don't, don't fix it. Holiday across to McDonald, McDonald a shot. McDonald the point. <laughs> <laughs> 
Joe John came back to McDonald's, 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 they shot McDonald's. Point. Jonathan O'Brien in sight towards McDonald down in front of the goal. McDonald, they shot to McDonald the point. Kieran McDonald, Kieran McDonald goes on. It's still Kieran McDonald. Kieran McDonald, they shot. Kieran McDonald the point. Keys either cross to McDonald. McDonald is shot. Uh, he's, he's not going to say yeah, it this time. Not this I don't time. think so. And McDonald the oh, point. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. You're, you turned 40 this year, if you don't mind me saying. You turned 40 years of age this year. 40, yeah. And you're still, as we said, you're still playing. What actually keeps you motivated? Is it just, a, you said you love your club. Is it just a love of playing the game? Oh, yeah, I love, I love football. I just love it and love reading about it, love watching it, love trying to learn. You're always, you can learn. I go to under seven training. You can learn from them. I just love playing the game. And I often do get, you often get words to say, well, are you going past it? Are you making an ass of yourself? Well, I'd hope that somebody would tell me, Karen, enough is enough. I hope at this stage it hasn't come and I, I keep going for another one. You can learn, you said you can learn, you see kids playing, you can take something from that in terms of how you think about your own game? Yeah, well, people are on about defensive football. As long as it doesn't get into underage, as long as, as, long as coaches don't go out to a seven year old and stop them running helter skelter, stop them having fun, well, then I'm all right with the way senior football is going. But if it comes into under 10s and under 12s and under 14s, well then something has to be done because you go out there to seven and eight year olds and they're all chasing the ball and you'll see one fella that might step back and you'll say, yeah, well, there's football there, you know. Now, Kieran, you were a flair player, I guess, to, to describe you, but you can't play like that without being able to handle yourself in the field. And we've talked to a couple of your previous opponents over the years who have confirmed that you were well able to handle the physical <laughs> side of it. Did, did, that, did that physical uh, strength come from your... Because I've often read that it, that, that would have come from your day job as a pipe player. Yeah, I, I, I never went to gyms. Many's the manager that I've had words with seeing, <laughs> and I haven't turned up for gym sessions. Because, and, uh, I just didn't do it. Uh, my work stood to me. I'd never changed what I'd done for... 25 years as regards work. I used to get up at four o'clock in the morning, used to, uh, whatever part of the country I was working in, i go there, work. On a Monday, on a Monday usually, you get up at whatever, four, four o'clock, you'd work longer Monday night because you'd be getting away Tuesday for training. So you might head away at six. Any, within two hours drive, I come home to Castle Bear for training. You get out of the van and you go training from eight to 10. Then you go home and you get up the next morning at four. And I never had to do a gym work because it just, it just stood to me. And as I said, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, I mean, if you were ever any further than two hours away, we've heard a story that you just rock up to club training sessions and just say, sorry, Kieran McDonald here. Uh, do you mind if I join in? Is, it, is that true? No, false. No, I, <laughs> I'd be too shy to rock up and say, I'm Kieran yeah. McDonald, here I go. And so if I'm in an area, I'd get to know the, who's managing, what's happening, and I'd ask their permission, could I rock up and play it? <laughs> <laughs> so then I'd go Start heading out McDonald 11 jerseys. <laughs> yeah. Was, them. Did you find it a healthy balance? Because it's a, a tough, physically demanding job that you were doing off the field and on the field. And, uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of traveling to be doing, a lot of work, both in a, in a professional sense and in the, in the amateur sense with the GEA. When you were working, could you forget about football? And when you were playing football, could you forget about work? I suppose that's why I was looking the game in the work I was at. For maybe one out of the 20 had interest in football, would ask you about football. They'd be more interested in work. They'd be more interested in horses. They'd be more interested <laughs> in anything bare football. So I could go to work and I was just a normal Joe Soap working my 10 or 12 hour day till I went training, you know. So would I be able to, would I be able to handle an office job where it was talked about all day or a big game coming up, no, I'd probably be happier away working the way I was. Did you ever try it? The office job, nice handy nine to five? Yeah. I remember, yeah, <laughs> my mother's going to kill me now. <laughs> I remember I came back, uh, I was 20 years of age and I got a job in one of the financial institutes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I remember I was started working on Monday with big reservations. And, uh, <laughs> On Tuesday, Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock, I arrived home and mom said, what's, what's happening? 
I said, Mom, I went out for a pack of biscuits and I said, I'm at home. And I says, I'm not going back there again. <laughs> <laughs> it did just didn't quite suit you. Didn't, didn't suit me, no. <laughs> and tell us, you lost three All-Ireland finals playing for Mayo. Uh, and this is the story of any Mayo footballer you talk to, unfortunately. A lot of amazing days and it not happening on the big day. Did you, on each of those mornings when you were heading to Croke Park, did you believe within yourself that you were going to win? Oh, yeah. Every time. Every... A lot of the results proved... Otherwise, you know, we were badly beaten in the, lab, in the finals. But every, mor every Sunday morning that I woke up for an all Ireland final, I firmly believed, I firmly believed that we had enough lessons learned, enough pre preparation done, enough talent. Yeah, it just... You come home that road again on a Sunday night thinking it'll be different again. Do, like, do you still think about those, about those days? Is it a thing that you've kind of pushed to the back of your mind or is it still, still pretty raw? Oh, it's pretty raw, you know. You'd, you'd have a mad illusion in your head that you're still good enough to play inter-county football with the, hope, with the hope of getting an All-Ireland title. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of support in the room for you there. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, they're great memories. They're defeats, but they're great memories. You know, it was great to be there. Would it be great to have an All-Ireland title at senior? Of course it would. The reaction we had here when we, we said last night we were going to have you on today was absolutely unbelievable. We've, I don't think we've ever had a reaction from within a county about somebody coming on like we had from Mayo people, which shows the esteem that you're held in there, I think. Is it fair to say that relationship was rocky at certain times, that you did have your difficulties with fans from time to time in your Mayo career? I suppose everybody, everybody has trouble with fans at certain, at certain points of their career. Uh, Mayo people just... They expect, they expect an awful lot. They expect all Ireland titles. When you lose so many, they always expect the next one to be a, to be a winner's medal. So, did I ever did, did I ever did I ever wish that I wasn't playing football for Mayo? Never. No. Would I? Even around 2003, there was an incident. You were playing an away game in Fermanagh, and <laughs> you left the panel, I believe, because of some stick that you were getting that day. Well, I was. Uh, I remember playing it. We, we, I remember that day, it, was, it wasn't stick towards me because I was well able to handle the stick. It was stick towards a member of my family, which I thought at the time was very much out of order. It wasn't my sister's fault that I was kicking the ball 10 yards wide, that's it. But I didn't, I didn't think that me personally playing a football game should affect her. So at that time, I said enough was enough. And do you regret that now? You weren't away for that long. But if, if you, you ha were to have that decision back? No, if I, I wouldn't change it. I still, think, well, I, I still think the people that were giving my sister abuse, shouldn't, or I, she shouldn't be put through that because I was playing football. No, so I wouldn't have changed it. You came back, Kieran, in 2004 mm -hmm. and won an All-Star that year. Um, so I think in good times and bad, the one common or one of the consistent things about you is that you almost never do interviews, almost never did interviews during your career. Why was that? Number one, I'd be a shy person. I'd be a shy person individually. I wouldn't, uh, I'd be introvert. I wouldn't be extrovert, no matter what people <laughs> say about me. Um, my job was to play football. My job was, at the time, to play for me. Oh, I didn't want to, I didn't think doing an interview, I put enough pressure on myself on a football field without adding to it by saying something in the paper, by maybe annoying a manager. No, so I was thought it was better left alone. I had no real interest in it. And plus, the work I was in, construction work, you don't really talk about it. You know, you don't... Uh, you, you, you were worried about how you might be perceived by the people you worked with, in well, part. No, it's just... It's a different type of a culture. It's a, you know, it's not... You don't open up to all the things that you, you know what I mean. You don't, you don't be seen to be opening up or talking to papers and you know. So I just thought yeah. it was better. Yeah, yeah, because it was weird. Like we interviewed you on the radio three years ago, and we actually didn't know what your voice sounded like. You know, it's <laughs> a, it a, you know, it's a weird thing given you you know all, every sports star now nearly. You know, you know what they sound like. You know what yeah. they look like. You know, to, it's, that was just such a strange thing for us, even just on a personal level. Yeah, as I said before, it, it, didn't, it, it didn't interest me, you know what I mean? I just thought it would be taken away from my game, taken away from the team, 
taken away from the chance of winning an All-Ireland title. So I thought it was better left not done. It's funny that you've mentioned, you've used the word shy a couple of times to describe yourself introverted there. I, I, I think we'd all have seen you on the field and just assumed differently. Uh, it's, it's the way you played, the way you looked on the field, everything about it screams, look at me, you were, you were the centre of things there. But that sounds like it's exactly the opposite of how you wanted to be viewed off the field. Yeah. Off the field is totally different. On the field, I'm comfortable. On the field, it's natural. On the field, I'd, I'd spend 10 hours a day on a football field if I could. The likes of this, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, that the was that always the case? That you, 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 you that was just from when you were a kid right the way up, that was where you, you felt you could be yourself. Or not necessarily be yourself is, is the wrong way, but that you could show off a bit. Yeah. It, as I said before, I just love the game. It, it, it come, it comes kind of easy. You can see a few steps ahead and I just, out there, it's natural, you know what I mean? It doesn't. It's the, I don't know if you think in any way that it would have fitted people's perceptions better, maybe if, if in, it would have been an easier fit if you had been doing interviews and you had been an attention seeker. But what you were actually doing was you were looking how you were because that's just how you wanted, that that's just your choice of how you wanted to look. In ways you think that that and not doing interviews added to a bit of a mystique around you, around what you were like? Because I kind of get that sense that people don't really know who you are and this mystique has grown a little bit. Possibly, I suppose. Anybody can have a digger, anybody can say what they want about you when you know you're not going to talk back. <laughs> so I spent my whole football career with people just presuming what I was, presuming what they thought I was knowing that I wasn't going to say anything else to make it any different. And it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me as long as my family weren't affected and as long as I was still playing good football. It didn't really bother me whether I wore white boots or... It didn't bother me. I suppose the last question, the, the key question, Kieran, is Mayo for Sam 2015? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Are they the front runners at the moment? No, they're not. They have a new management team, work to do. Hard to get used to 30 new players again. Add in the top four, yeah. And will they be at the top table come September? We don't know, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Kieran, it's been absolutely great. Really appreciate you making a rare appearance. Thanks so much. Kieran McDonald, everybody. <laughs> We've got one more task here because you're the man who can change the good wall. Here's going to spin over and we're going to yeah. look at the top ten. Yeah. You can send out here, Kieran. That'd be perfect. We're at top 10 Irish sports people of all time at the moment. Okay, so uh, number 10 is uh, Johnny Giles. Uh, Paul O'Connell is 9. Ron Nogara is 8. Uh, Paul McGrath is 7. George Best, 6. And then the top 5 is AP McCoy, Katie Taylor, uh, Rory McElroy. 2 is Henry Shefflin. And number 1 is uh, Brian O'Driscoll. All right. Who are we adding to that top 10? Uh, tough decision, but Morris Fitz. Morris yeah, Fitzgerald? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He just has so much God-given talent, but yet he trained, dedicated himself to train to perfect everything. And he's just the best I ever saw. What was he like to play against? Because he did do damage to your county in 97. Not a man to bear a grudge, and that's good to see. <laughs> Demolished us in 97. Yeah. No, he put on an exhibition in 97. And it's just, as I said, everything came to him naturally to him. Uh, but the amount of time and the amount of perfection he used to do, it's unbelievable. The kind of player that almost the defenders in your team it's impossible to really defend fully against a player like that if he's in his you, pump. You can never defend against him one-on-one. -on -one. All right, well, the next question. This is where you have to start being a little bit unpopular because someone's coming <laughs> off the wall. How high up, what number is Morris Fitz going at? He's going in with, uh, instead of Johnny Giles. Okay. Johnny Giles, straight back up. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed yourself for the week, Johnny. <laughs> you only lasted a week after being put up by Liam Brady. Now you can do another switch, though, so John can come back up or you can do whatever you want with the ten names there. I want to move Raj up instead of Rory. Okay, Raj goes right. up in number two. Rory McIlroy back down to number eight. Well, listen, we leave it at that. Absolutely brilliant. Kieran McDonald, everybody, you can take a seat there, Kieran.